So, breaking news. That's my breaking news jingle. You'll get to hear that as we do more breaking news on these videos. Breaking news is that police have arrested someone in connection with the Talk Talk hacks, the uh, latest security problem which Talk Talk, uh, the major ISP and B2B service provider here in the UK, um, after they got hacked on October the 22nd and everyone got the collie wobbles, all the four million odd Talk Talk users were up in arms saying, oh, oh my, you know, my, our personal information has been grabbed by these bad guys. We're going to get even more phone calls from the scammers as a result of this. And people who had shares in Talk Talk thought, God, blimey, this is awful. We're going to sell our shares because we don't trust that company to be competent anymore. Um, but the police have now arrested someone, and you're thinking, what, what kind of, what kind of genius, evil genius living in a volcano could possibly have masterminded the Talk Talk hack? Well, we don't know. Obviously, if the person who's been arrested is in... I have to say this for legal reasons. Uh, we don't know if the person who's been arrested is actually connected to the hack at all. Um, so I have to stress that. But a gentleman has been arrested and he's a 15-year-old. Uh, so basically a schoolboy um, has been taken to the police station, uh, suspected of some kind of involvement in the Talk Talk hack. And the Talk Talk hack, if you remember... Uh, was the combination of two things, we believe. We believe there was a, a DDoS component, that's a distributed denial of service attack. That's when a website gets so bombarded by traffic that it finds it hard to stand up. And so it just sort of wobbles a bit and then sort of teeters over and crashes. Um, now, we believe that was designed to be something of a distraction from the main attack, which is thought to have been what we call an SQL injection attack, a SQL injection attack. Um, that's a, not a particularly sophisticated attack either. The DDoS is really simple. Anyone who's got a kitten can probably allow their kitten just to sort of fumble across the keyboard and they'll probably launch a DDoS attack against some website or another. Uh, but a SQL injection attack, not very much more sophisticated, but it is a way of tricking poorly coded websites into coughing up their supposedly secret database information and l allowing it to fall into the hands of hackers. Now, SQL injection attacks aren't anything new. Um, they've been around for a decade or more. People have known about them. And anyone who has read anything about coding websites should hopefully have found out how to avoid SQL injection attacks. Just careful, sensible programming is the way to avoid it, rather than sort of careless, flagrant programming. Unfortunately, whoever was building TalkTalk's website, and indeed there are many other websites out there which still suffer from SQL injection attacks, um, hadn't properly actually protected their website, and that's why they're now having this huge PR disaster, because people are quite rightly up in arms about the fact that their data is now falling into the hands, potentially, of criminals. Now, like I said, we don't know if this 15-year-old is involved or not, and it's obviously far, far too early uh, to cast any aspersions in that particular direction. But what's interesting is they haven't arrested some Islamic cyber jihadi, which of course the press were pointing the finger at just a couple of days ago um, because someone anonymously posted on the internet claims that they were the hackers and they said we are cyber Islamic jihadis from Russia um, and we demand that various money be spent to us and that you take us all terribly seriously and you don't tell our mum. So, what can we learn from this? Well, first of all, people lie on the internet, and you shouldn't necessarily believe everything that you read on the internet, or indeed, what you watch on the internet. Yeah, all kinds of people talk all kinds of nonsense. Um, but So you shouldn't believe everything which you see on the internet, and furthermore, if you run a website and your customers have entrusted you with their personal information, including their payment card information and their email address, all kinds of details like that, then you have a duty to properly protect it, to make sure that your website is built securely so that it won't spit out information into the hands of hackers and identity thieves. And the way to do that, I would suggest, is you should go to your IT team and the system administrators and the web coders, the people who built your website, and say to them, when you built this website, were you aware of SQL injection attacks, were you building it in such a way that those kind of attacks would be repelled and prevented from happening? And if you have any lack of confidence in their answer, then maybe that is the time to go to a third party external penetration tester and say, hey, we'll give you a little bit of cash. Please test our website. See if you can find some vulnerabilities because we would rather you found the flaws with our permission 
than waiting for some malicious hacker to break in and steal our data and us to end up as the next headline in the press. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to like it and check out some of the other videos I've made as well. And if you really want me to make more vids, then subscribe to my channel. All right. So, have you subscribed yet? Come on, subscribe.